All right, y'all, I'm back for a split second. Um, yeah, I only got about 15% real quick. Stole it off my phone. So if y'all can share this real quick. Just to bring everybody back. quick for y'all y'all make sure y'all share this um i probably got like 15 percent i'm about to go to the family house if anyone would like to assist me in helping them i'm probably gonna get a bunch of wings or something uh they want to steal barbecue so i'm gonna try to get a bunch of stuff from the grocery store real quick so if you want to assist me please inbox me with that or reach out make sure y'all share this back to everybody that was watching my phone died Do it like that, you know what I'm saying? So everybody can be on the same page. Hey, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. I'm gonna catch you, bro. <laughs> I was gonna catch you, bro. You fell off that car on the live. That would have been ugly. Oh no, I ain't have to. He he landed on his feet. No. No, you didn't record him. No, I was gonna catch you. I wasn't gonna record you, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm coming over there. Yeah, I'm coming over there. I'm finna um. I think they want to still. They said they still want a barbecue. I ain't finna barbecue. I, ain't, I bought. I bought some screen beans and some smoked turkey. Did you see it? I ain't barbecue. Let me know. I was, or I just have to order some stuff. They wanted to barbecue. That's what they told me. That's what I said. I mean, it's late now. I thought you gonna fall. <laughs> At the end, huh? Out here. Is the mother, is the mother out there? Is the mother, is the mother um, 
You want to give her something? I want to give her. My mom knows her, so she wants to No, no, no. She just went, went that way. Where where Lily go? Uh -huh. Somebody want to hand her some money personally. Tell them to hand it to me. They want they know her. They like they want to see her. Where they hug at? her in this car right there. The, it's a lady, older lady. Tell her to come here. Tell her come leave. I don't, that's what I thought she pulled off. Tell her, tell her. Tell her. Do, um, do y'all? They going to? They was going to the house and hopping in the cars. I'm about to go to the house and so is that. That's like their family representative. But yeah. I figured you, yeah, I don't know if you want, I thought you might have wanted to see her, see her. No, I just want to, I just want to get, that's the that's representative? Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, get this to her, tell me, and a mother gave her this. You know, and a mother, okay, mother. no problem. This said, and a mama, this for Lily, uh, so. Okay, who wanted? And a mama. Anna? Yeah. You know, I don't, that, okay. You about to drive past her right now. You should probably back up. You should, you should probably back up, Juan. Because you're the only one in that lane to block them. <laughs> sure, he's running. So for those just not tuning in, um, in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, um, a family was murdered by <coughs> the the dad or the granddad of the family. He murdered his wife, girlfriend. Um, I don't want to get it wrong, but he murdered her and four kids, his kids and, and two kids that wasn't his. And um, the only one that survived was a a, a three year old little boy. Um, he he spared him. Um, the police have the man in custody, so you'll be seeing all kind of probably seeing all kind of stories on the news about it. Um, so I um, work directly with the family um, to help them deal with this tragedy and um, make it through everything that's going on. And for those that don't know me, one of the things I try to do is I try to provide as much information as I can. Um, there's a lot of stuff that happens when you're dealing with stuff like this. You have the GoFundMe situation where people will post GoFundMe's, different people post them. Then you have like the media situation where they'll talk to anybody and get any statement that they can. You know what I mean? And they'll twist the story and stuff like that. And then, you know, playing an individual, finding a good funeral home. Like all this stuff is very difficult. Obituaries. All this stuff is very, very, very hard to, to think about when you first lose a loved one. So I'll try to help them in the system um, with some of those things. But the main thing I try to do is I try to feed them and make sure they have food. Um, a lot of people don't eat. Um, they don't think about eating and they don't realize it. It makes them angry, makes a lot of families fight. Just having food sometimes can calm a whole family situation down. And um, in this situation, it's a larger family. Um, so normally I, uh, I just feed everything out of pocket, my pocket. But this family's like, it's a big family. Um, five family members have passed away. Um, and it's very, very hard. Uh, it's very hard to deal with. Um, to bury five people at once and you got family that's coming from out of town you got all this stuff going on so the one main thing is like i said it's about about 75 people that be at the house um is i'll try to feed them just so for those people that don't know me i'm not an organization um i don't get any funding um i don't do any get any of that stuff i'm actually literally just a regular person um that takes my free time and gives back to the community and that's literally all i do i don't um so the stuff that I buy, usually, um, I, I usually just go to a family. Um, people know me for my platform. Um, and people, individuals actually following me, they know that I, I pretty much try to fight for injustices or usually like police brutality situations, kids, anything like that. Um, I don't work a job. I, I'm an entrepreneur that basically takes all of my own like ideas and things like that. And I advertise on social media and I advertise like my brand and stuff. And I take the money that I make and I, every day I go out into the community and this is what I do with it. So um, I don't have a team or anything like that. I just wanted to make that be known. So um, anytime that something like this happens, if anyone wants to help, um, please help. Um, I'm not, it's not something that's just covered. God covers it. Like every time something like this happens, it gets covered. I thank God for covering it because I don't be knowing how I'm going to help these families when I actually 
show up on the scene. But the fact that um, I feel like I'm obligated, I'm a platform that God blessed me with in my platform. As a platform, I feel obligated to help people um, because I do have that kind of reach. So if anybody would like to assist in helping with food or anything like that, um, you can bring food to you can bring food to where we're gonna be at you can stop at the um you can bring food to where we're gonna be you can uh let me know that you want to order some food you can hit me up you can cash at me you can inbox me anything you want to do um basically i'm about to go to the family's house um they're probably gonna barbecue tomorrow um it's gonna be a lot that they need to do for these next couple of days and they're gonna need assistance with people need to travel from out of town and stuff and people to understand like a gofundme it takes you a couple of weeks to get that money so the family members have to travel from out of town or sometimes the funeral homes will do a, a free burial, but then they'll tell you, you can only have X, Y, and Z. You can't have this, you can't have that. So all of that kind of stuff is actually, um, all of that kind of stuff is actually extra. So if anyone wants to, um, I have the GoFundMe link on my page. If anyone wants to assist the family with any extra burial expenses, like, or anything like that, any kind of thing they would like to have. And I know people would usually be saying a funeral home was paid for, but it's a three-year-old little boy that survived this whole ordeal. So, and then people be needing counseling. You know, you might want to start a college fund. There's a lot of stuff that could, that could become a benefit from um, when people go through a tragedy like this. So if anyone want to donate to the GoFundMe, the GoFundMe is on my, on my page. Um, if anyone wants to help with actually like feeding these next couple of days, feeding the family, assisting the family, like that I'm gonna put my cash up up really quick this is only for food and stuff like that and, and let me remind you you can order food as well I'll go pick it up or whatever but for those for those that don't know me or anything like that but for those that want to help assist with like just feeding the family on a daily basis I usually um I'm gonna give you inbox me and I'll give you the address because I don't want to just put like the address on here for everybody. Um, and I know some people live out of town and stuff like that, so they can't. So this is mainly what the cash app is for. Either way, um, it gets done. Um, just to tell y'all, not to say it like that, but either way, it gets done. I just um, had a lot of people that wanted to show their appreciation. <laughs> and I just wanted to explain a lot of the things that uh, money goes towards in this whole process. Some people want t-shirts made. Some people want buttons made. Um, the balloons had to be bought. You know, when you sitting at a house and you got 75 to 100 people that have to eat and nobody thought about it because y'all sitting there thinking about the loss of y'all loved one. They, like chip in money to eat. Y'all got to say, well, who got money to eat? And people don't usually like have the money for tragic situations just to sit around. So then it, it falls on the family members that got a little bit more. And those family members, they already usually have to pay for the funeral, pay for the everybody clothes that ain't gonna have none, you know, the uncles and stuff that ain't gonna have stuff like that. So all that kind of stuff, um, it goes a long way when people help in the situation because you don't wanna have to worry about the, uh, like when I buried my dad in August, I had to worry about, I had to cremate my dad to be completely honest with y'all. Because I didn't have enough money to bury him. I didn't have enough money for his autopsy and stuff like that. And because my dad just died from like, um, I came home one day and tapped him on his leg and he was dead. And um, since he died like that, I really didn't reach out to ask for help because it wasn't a, a tragic thing. You know what I mean? Not to say it like that, but in situations where people deal with something tragic, the loss is so, uh, so heartfelt and it's such a hurtful loss that mainly you it takes a couple days to even realize that what's really going on that it's a real thing you like man this really happened so right now they in their mind this ain't even real to them yet right now it's like a dream state kind of kind of thing they going through and and that's why i stick around too they need love they need people that's gonna keep them going keep them moving keep it together because they all gonna fall apart at different times and if you have people that's a little bit on the outside that can understand what you're going through Sometimes they could be there to help you out, even though they don't know you like that. They could be there to love you and help you out and motivate you to keep it going. And that's what community and that's what the village concept is. Being able to motivate each other and keep each other going and make sure that we have, um, that make sure that we have each other's backs. Um, this family is one of the most loving families. I've, like the, the most, they, they going through something that I'm like amazed at how they making it through to be completely honest with y'all. So 
sorry about my mustache, y'all getting all wet and stuff. But I'm amazed at how they handling this. They handling this with like they handling they handling this with like such a I got such respect for the way for for how they holding holding themselves down. Like if you seen this family and how I'm sorry it's so dark in here, y'all. I know that's why people tuning off. If you seen this family and how they holding it down for a family that just lost so much, like I could never imagine what they going through. Um, and it's very difficult not to cry in front of them, but to watch them be so strong, they make it very easy. Like to to, to see how strong they are, they make it real, real, real easy. Like literally. Um, so, if you would like to assist in any kind of food thing or anything like that. Um, please reach out like people was asking on my live. How could they assist and um, We was at the vigil so I didn't really want to talk about it too much But um, besides giving out the mom's cash app if you want to help her like with what she's gonna be going through these next couple of days I'll get her cash app again from my page and I'll post that if you want to help with anything The family is gonna be going through without this whole process You could help with that and if you just want to help with some type of food for the next couple of days or help with the assistance for the next couple of days of like um me assisting them with food and um, anything like that, um, any kind of resources, whatever they ask me for, pretty much, I'm just gonna provide for the next couple of days, so they ain't gotta worry about it. Um, they were, and I'm gonna try to know they wasn't even gonna put a GoFundMe up. I had to convince them to put a GoFundMe up because I'm like, people are asking, how can they help? And I don't want them to go through me. I want them to go through y'all, and I don't want them to go through other individuals either. And I don't want a fake one to pop up. So they people don't, they mind don't really be on that kind of stuff, but. At the same time, a week or two later, every single family, I meet, a, I, have, I work with a lot of families, and sometimes they be like, oh, we don't need it, we got, <coughs> excuse me, they be like, oh, we don't really need it, we got it, <coughs> excuse me, dang, sorry about that, y'all, they be like, oh, oh, we don't really need it, we got it, and then, like, literally, like, I would say a week or two later, they want to put a GoFundMe up because <coughs> they realize and they lost a lot more than just people. You lose a lot more than just the burial. Like, for example, these people, they their house is boarded up. So people got to stay at hotels or find somewhere to stay for the next couple of days. So, and that's stuff that a GoFundMe won't help you with right away. But people need immediate assistance. And they, and they don't think about that. But a, a lot of families, they be like, oh, we got it. We don't need that. We don't want to look like a family that's reaching out for it with a GoFundMe. And then like a week and a half later, they like, can you help us with a GoFundMe? And I'm like, yeah, but then it's Milwaukee. So another tragedy didn't happen and people are focused on that. The news don't want to double back and do the GoFundMe. Like people don't want to double back. So I always try to encourage the family, even though you don't want to think about it, even though it's something y'all don't want to worry about right now, make sure y'all post it up so you can get a handle on all the fake ones. So the people that want to help, because people do care more than people think. People think we live in a world where people don't care no more, and that's not true at all. People do care. I see caring people all the time. <coughs> it's just they don't, people that care always get burned, so they scared to trust people. So you have to find trustworthy people and people that care and put them together. And then that's how you change things. So... I think it's a wonderful thing that, um, like, to see such a big family, like, actually that's going through something, um, pull pull each other together and love each other like that. Hey, Ali, how you doing? Like, this family, um, man, like, I admire their, their strength. I admire the family, period. Such a beautiful, large family. <clears throat> that pull together and one thing that I'm glad to do when I work with a family I always tell them they need to have a spokesperson for the family and they need to have like an order of what they want to say when they talk to news to the news I always try to encourage them to talk about the lives of the people that were lost instead of the person that did it because they'll glorify like a criminal before they glorify a victim and um no I'm not getting sick I uh I was drinking that, that juice and it went down the wrong way. <clears throat> and because I'm on my live, you know how you usually take a couple of minutes and you just cough it all up. 
because I'm on my live, I was too embarrassed to do that. So I didn't want to just be hacking. So I tried to like talk through it. And, and that's why you're hearing that. But it's rainy outside. No, I don't have the COVID. <clears throat> I don't know how to take care of myself. So that's that problem. How you, how you doing? Good, how are you? I'm doing all right. Can I get, um, hold on one second. Actually, let me go back to the car real quick. Yeah, I'm okay. Um, I'm not really, I'm, I'm just, like I said, I'm, I'm very like, it's amazing at how good this family, how well this family is handling themselves. Um, they the most beautiful, like most fun, most cool family. <clears throat> that I've been around. I've been around a lot of families that's been going through a tragedy. And I know a lot of families cool, so I don't want y'all to mistake what I'm saying. But like a lot of times, we have those uncles and those aunties and those individuals and people fight. And I, I done seen some ugly situation where people fought over the bodies. Like literally fought over who gonna be able to, who really got custody of the bodies and things like that. So like, when you see a family that's mourning and like, you know, like I've had to, you know, um, talk with families and pick them up and be like, you know, y'all got to stick together through this. You know, y'all can't, you know, you know, behind the scenes, let them know y'all can't, you know, fight through this. Y'all can't let it be public. Y'all got to stick it, keep it together. Y'all can't fight over the money that's coming in, like all of that kind of stuff. This family, though, like it's really been like just observing and learning from them where when one of them break down, another one hug them. And be like, come on, you can't do this. You got to be strong. You know, they pretty much got each other um, at different times. And I think that's such a beautiful thing. Okay? Yeah. Oh, okay. Why? Because you were like, I forgot this. Then you were like this. I, I was reaching know. in my pocket. No. Oh, okay. Got it. Let me get uh, two packs of Swishers. Two packs? Yeah. No, I'm okay. Are you okay? Uh, I got extra energy today, so I think so. Oh, okay. That's what's up. Thank you. No, y'all y'all ain't got to be alarmed. It'd be hard to shoot through this uh, double bulletproof glass. Oh. <laughs> what are you holding a second? How do we get to there? 60, 70, 80. Okay, no. 75, 85, 95, a dollar, Okay, you're all set. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Have a good night. All right. Am I okay? What do you mean am I okay? You reaching down like this in my pocket? Like, what? Like, I ain't even on that right now. Like, I'm not on that at all. Oh, they not for me, so. Um, they not for me. But y'all know I'm a street activist, so. Whatever y'all do around me, y'all do around me. That's what y'all, that, you know what I mean? Y'all know how I am. I'm, I'm from the streets. I'm not really i'm an activist because i have a calling from god and i have a reach but not because i'm a pastor that didn't turn activist i'm still the same dude like, i don't know how to change that part and i don't want to change that part i'm gonna always be the same nigga i don't want to never be no different um <clears throat> but and shout out to the people that reached out to me because like um it means a lot like i want y'all to know that too like i'm not there's no knock against the other activists, and I want y'all to understand what I'm finna say. Because they do what they do. Um, I just do what I do a little different. I have more of a personal relationship, um, usually because I have the time. <clears throat> well, I make the time. Um, but the other thing is, I don't mind being around certain environments or stuff. Um, you know what I mean? And that's just the truth. Like some, um, I wouldn't expect a pastor to be around weed and all that kind of stuff. So they'll come pray for a family. But I wouldn't expect them to be around the family when they truly mourn and when they're going through that part. So a lot of times I'm around the families when they're going through that part. I don't go live while they're going through that part. I don't show that part. I don't do it to glorify it or nothing like that. I do it because somebody needs to be there to understand what they're going through and to help them. And the main thing is to make sure that they get the most information that they can. Um and try to help them so that they can have the smoothest most easiest process that um they can have in the world it's a lot of nonprofit organizations that's supposed to be doing what the, what i do they get money to do what i do 
but they don't really do it, and I do. So since they don't really do it, I always do it. But that's what's supposed to happen. And the reason they don't do it is because they can't be in the environments where people are truly mourning. So it's a, it's, it's, it's a messed up thing. Yeah, I didn't lost like a parent. I didn't lost a, 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 a wife. I didn't lost a kid. So I pretty much um, have all of that covered. Unfortunately, I have pretty much. Um, they weren't to gun violence or anything like that. But once somebody die, it don't really, you, you know, how they die hurts, but it don't change the loss. Like if you lose a kid and your kid got shot and I lose a kid and my kid drowned, we gonna feel the same way about losing a kid. You know what I mean? We really gonna, I'ma hate the water and you gonna hate the dude that, that killed him. You know what I'm saying? So, so um, I appreciate y'all for tuning in today. I'ma do a proper live later. Um, this was just like a wrap up of the, of the individual. Um, I'm going to see what they want to eat. If anybody want to help, they can inbox me um, or cash at me if you want to help with just the food. This is only for food. This is for nothing else, only for food. I don't have an organization. This ain't to help my cause or nothing like that. Donate to, don't donate to that or anything like that. And make sure you inbox me or, or at least let me know that you're going to do something. Because if once a few people give, I don't be wanting nothing extra. If, if you do want to give something extra, you can either give directly to the Mother's Cash App or directly to um, the GoFundMe. This is literally just for immediate services. Anybody want to help with immediate services that the GoFundMe won't cover? It's like food, uh, anything like that. Um, <clears throat> flowers. Anybody want to donate some flowers or uh roses or um just anything somebody want to give the mom money but want to re remain anonymous um you can pull up on me anybody want to just bring food that's that's obviously a, a help anybody that feel like they trust me as a platform because they see all the stuff that i do but they don't know if they trust the gofundme and all of that is 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 welcome to do that as well so that's pretty much the only reason i posted that i'm about to pull up at this house um I was to go off the live for a second. Um, I love my city. I love my people. I love everything that y'all do. Please inbox me and help me help this family. Justin Brown, I just got $10 from you. I appreciate that. Um, any little bit helps. Um, and I'm sorry for saying that out loud, but it popped up like on my thing. But if you want to give anonymously, make sure that you say that. Otherwise, I do, I do announce what <clears throat> people give. It's for accountability, just so y'all know. Okay, I, I got your inbox, uh, anonymous person. <clears throat> yeah, if you um, it's not my loss; it's the family's loss. Um, I, I'm just helping them. But like, if you um, if you want help, I got you, Wana. I got you. Give me um, I figure it out. I love y'all too. But yeah, this is this is just for like my my stuff is all for love. This is love. This ain't t tied to the family. It's not connected to the family. This is something I do out of my pocket. Usually it's a family of about 30 people when I'm there. And I pay for liquor, all kind of stuff. I'm just being honest. Anybody will tell you. I pay for liquor, all kind of shit on my own, on my pocket. Every time I show up to a family, I represent families maybe once or twice a week. I've been doing it for like four years. And y'all have never really seen me even tap my cash app up there. That's why I don't have an organization name for one. But it is like 75 people. I ain't going to lie to y'all. And um, I, be, I, I be trying to feed them like three or four times a day. Um... That's how I should go. Um, I might have, uh, I might like yesterday. I, I I had somebody brought me some pieces. Shout out to the young lady that brought me ten pieces yesterday uh, while we were live. So they brought the pieces out. Then I ordered some wings, and then somebody brought some wings, and I think somebody else brought some wings. So that was how they ate yesterday. Um, but then today, you know, you're looking at three, four hundred dollars a day. Um, honestly, when you're trying to feed, at least, honestly, let's let's be honest. You're looking at about six hundred dollars a day trying to feed 75 people daily for the next couple days you know what i mean because you got to figure if, if a person want to order like wings or something you got to order like a hundred dollars maybe two hundred dollars worth of wings like right now i could order like two hundred dollars worth of wings and everybody might it might feed everybody you know what I'm saying? everybody might be straight from that you get what i'm saying but like what if like i order two hundred dollars worth of wings at like five o'clock and then like What? I think something's happening to my tire. 
Yep. I can hear it. What if I order two hundred dollars worth of wings at uh at six o'clock and then the rest of the family roll through at nine o'clock and it's another forty people. You see what I'm saying? So then you gotta order another hundred dollars worth of wings. Cause the people at six o'clock, they really ain't they they kinda hungry still. You get what I'm saying? So you got all of that stuff going on, and when you got all that going on. I think I just got a flat tire. I'm sure I just got a flat tire, actually. Which I ain't tripping about. When it rains, it pours. Oh, man, I don't know if this is a one-way or not. But no, it'll be fine. So, but what happens is, I might, I might like, like I order the pieces, and and when or when the young lady says she's gonna bring the pieces, you know, it take people time, and I appreciate it. But the young lady says she needed to, uh, she's gonna bring the pieces. She brought the pieces, right? So when she got the pieces, and I, I, I really appreciate it. But it was about sixty-five family members there when, when the pieces. They were like, yeah, we would love some pieces. And then what happened was. They it was kind of cold and rainy, and then they took the they took the bodies from the house right before the pieces came. So some of the family members didn't want to be there for that, so they left. So once those family members left, they didn't eat. So when we got back to the house, they had to eat. Plus the family members that was there, ten pieces is a lot, but it's not really a lot. And then it was other people at the visual, so it's not like you don't tell people they can't eat. You're not gonna do that. You know what I mean? Ain't nobody gonna do that. It's, a, it's flat. It'll be okay, though. I don't, I don't even worry about stuff like that. I, that's a blessing to me. Like, to deal with a flat tire, that's a blessing. That's how I literally feel about it. I could be dealing with so much more in my life. These people dealing with losing five family members. I got to deal with a flat tire. That's such a blessing. But, um, yeah, so... So then after that, I had to order some wings. So then when the wings came, somebody had asked me, like, did they eat yet? And I was like, well, I ordered some wings, but I don't know. You know what I mean? So then they brought some more wings, and they were fine. But I wasn't even sure if they were fine. You know, they were telling me they were fine because, you know, they're a big family. They, you know how people are going to tell you they're fine. So I wasn't sure. So then today, they said they wanted some barbecue. So originally, I was going to have some people buy some chicken and stuff. So they probably did buy the chicken and stuff. And I bought some chicken and stuff, too. But now it got late. So we might, we're not going to barbecue. So if I went to the store and bought $150 worth of meat and I had other people buy meat, it's not a loss at all because we could barbecue tomorrow. But then that means I had thought I figured out how to feed them today, if that makes any sense, because we was going to barbecue. But now that we're not barbecuing, when I pull up, I have to figure out, okay, well, I was going to figure out tomorrow how to feed them tomorrow. So now let me double back and feed them today. So I just want to let y'all know, like, some of the stuff that happens because I want y'all to know like how easily how easily like I ran up a thousand dollars or two thousand dollars helping families out of my own pocket within a week because you can easily spend three or four hundred dollars on just food I want people to understand that like how and how big it is so for me I think that's important because just imagine you got to bury some a loved one and now you just thought like, man, I got to spend like $2,000 on food this week. I'm going to have to buy the food for the for the funeral, for the repast, for like that's going to be a lot of food. And you think about just the food alone when you're going through something like that can cost you a couple thousand dollars. So a lot of times just being able to help with that. And having people chip in, whether it's ten dollars, twenty dollars, whether it's food, whether it's a plate, whatever they could do, having people just chipping in like that, it go a long way. I want y'all to know that it goes a really, 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 really long way. Uh, it's very important. That part is very important. So, you know, because I, I I know people always say it's a go find me up. What could the mama need money for? The mama might might want to wear something nice to the funeral. The go find me got to be verified and all kind of stuff. 
The mom, you know, they might want to have some shirts. They might want to buy some balloons for the visual. You see, they had all them balloons there. They might want to, uh, the family might need to fly a family member in from out of town. Uh, a mom, a sister, a brother might need to come out of town. Might not have the, the clothes that they need for a funeral. Everybody not prepared for a funeral. Um, might have to figure out how to do the funeral during the coronavirus. So it's a lot that come into play um, with money outside of just burying somebody um, that people don't know. You usually spend about five to ten thousand dollars without burying, without even the burial stuff, just out of your pocket on stuff when you doing when you having a funeral, just literally out of your pocket. So, um, and sorry for the rant, y'all. Um, I just wanted y'all to know that because um, I never, I never really explain to people like the process, and I'm actually, excuse me, I'm actually a little frustrated right now because. To be honest with you, I should have the money, but these politicians owe me about five, six thousand dollars. And I ain't gonna name nobody right now, but I'm gonna just put it out there because not because I endorse them, but because they asked to be to advertise for them, um, to to support them advertising. I uh, I'm an advertising platform, I'm a brand. Just like Channel 6, just like Facebook, just like Channel 12, just like 860, just like 1290, just like V100. Frank Nitty is a brand. The whole Milwaukee is a brand. And if you want to advertise with the brand, it costs you money. And for some reason, whenever they get done with everything, they be like, oh, I had to give Facebook this. Oh, I had to give such and such that. Oh, I had to give this person that. Like, I don't want to hear that because I'm a brand as well. And just like you pay them, you have to pay me. And a lot of times I do a lot more for people than other people going to do. And people actually believe in the people that I support. So not to put it out there, and I ain't going to name nobody because I support a lot of politicians. But realistically, I'm supposed to have the money. And this is why I do the stuff that I do. I'm supposed to have the money. But obviously with the COVID-19 and the way the election went, people aren't paying their bills and that's the best way to put it like that but I ain't, I ain't even trying to go into that exactly yeah people could bring food for them you right kelly brand that's the other thing um and that's what i pretty much been doing i prefer people to bring food um like somebody said they had cash and they on silver spring i'll go get it from them i can't now because i got a flat tire but if a person has cash if they could bring it that would be great you can get that directly to the family um, or if you, but this is, like I said, this is all for food. This is all just for feeding them for the next couple of days. I don't want them to have to worry about food. I don't want them to have to raise money for food. I don't want them to have to pay out of their pocket for food. I just literally show up and usually I don't even have to do this, but I literally show up and I'll be like, Hey, are y'all hungry? What can I feed y'all with? Bam. Um, and a lot of people have reached out and I appreciate it cause I'm not out here alone. Um, they let me know, even though I do my own thing, they said, they came and said, Hey, they're going to bring this. They're going to bring that. They can bring this. And they have brought it. Those people have been, um, actual people that have brought what they said. So the people have, um, um, some people have actually, um, brought the food and stuff. So yeah, if you can bring food, I would love to give you the address. Inbox me. I'll give you the address. You can bring food all day. Um, food is preferred over cash. Um, but for those that live out of town or do that not have the transportation or that want to remain anonymous, that still want to help out with just something small like feeding them right now um, or that believes in helping to my platform. Or if you just want to help out and you just want to just specifically say this is for this. Um, I want to buy the family flowers and then I'll buy the flowers. I'll get a card. You want me to sign your name? I'll sign your name. Anything like that. Um, you want to mail them some cards? You can let me know. I, 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 I can have them mail them to me or you can mail them directly to them. Um, you want to order some flowers and have them sent from a flower place. You could do that as well, or I'll go buy them for you. Um, anything that you want to do, um, I'm, I'm with it. Um, and this is pretty much something that, um, I'm probably going to be more open to doing more now. Um, just because I feel like, um, that's something that somebody should do. Um, let's, you know, let's just not give people food. See if people want to give flowers and stuff, um, and have cars and stuff like that. Um, I definitely will be willing to buy some cars for them. Um, cars in their name to send their condolences, um, food in their name, send their condolences. Um, and I'm, I don't know if you could do it like that to the funeral home directly and make them buy specific stuff. So that's why I would say that. Um, or if you, like I said, and it might be cheaper, like you may be able to get more flowers if I go get them or more cars and stuff like that. Um, so. So let me get off this live. I'm about to go in here. Um, I'm going to let my phone charge up a little bit. 
see what they need and everything. Appreciate everybody. Some people sent some um, cash app donations. And um, I'm sorry for reading the first person's name. I forgot. I just, not that I got excited. I just, <laughs> it popped up at the top bar. And I apologize for that, Justin. It popped up at the top like, bam, such and such sent this. And I'm, I'm real transparent with like when people give me stuff because I want people to know like, A, I received something on your behalf. B, this person gave something on your behalf. Unless the person tell me they wanted to be anonymous, I always like to be transparent because I never want nobody to say I'm taking advantage of anything. Because I'm going to tell you like this. A lot of times when I do something, there is no extra money. I'm going to tell you all the flat out truth. I've never done anything that had any extra money. Everything I've ever done, I've had to come out of my pocket. Shalanda tell you. Everything I ever did, like, like even when I go from giving them footballs and basketballs away at the park, I had three, four hundred and people matched me three, four hundred. Like whenever even I, st I hopped on Pastor Steven Anders uh, live about two weeks ago. He said, hey, Frank, hop on my Zoom. I hopped on his Zoom. And when I hopped on his Zoom, he was giving away like two hundred fifty dollars. You know what I'm saying? I wasn't. No, but you know, like I couldn't afford to do that at the, that day, but I gave away like a hundred dollars or 75 or something. I'm say, you know what? Since you're giving away money and you just invited me on your live, I'm gonna give away money too. And I ended up giving like $75, and then somebody else had told me they privately wanted to give away $25 through me or whatever, and they cashed up to me, and I gave that away too. So, um, every single time that I get, every single time that I ask y'all to give, I'm giving too. Um, I'm never going to ask y'all to give instead of me. I'm never going to ask y'all to give on my behalf. Uh, be, uh, you know, like, like, ask, say, say I need to give, uh, rat, give somebody clothes or kids clothes. Then yeah, I'll collect some kids clothes or something like that. But anytime I come on and ask y'all to help me do something, I mean, help me. I mean, it's literally help me not uh, pay for me to do it. Not use your money instead of mine. Help me. That means that I'm going to probably spend a couple hundred. And if the community gave me five or ten dollars a piece, I could take that couple hundred and match my couple hundred. And a lot of times I spend more than I get. So. I got you, Martina Jackson. Um. Oh, it's the. It's the, um, so if you send me a cash app, please inbox me, um, so that I can make sure that I got it and then make sure that I don't, um, it didn't go to the wrong spot or whatever. Keep you thick with it. That's why I just said that. So, so go ahead. Hey, Mama Farina. Okay. Okay, Wanda Williams, I'm about to inbox you. If you could come, if you could come here, that'd be great. Um, it's a real loving family. They appreciate the love. Um, it's a lot of people here, so if a person don't want to come in, I'll come out. It ain't no big deal. I'll come out. You want to meet the mom, or I mean, it depends on how she's feeling at that moment. She have moments, um, and I could just be, I'll be honest with you about that. But you can come directly to the house um, and give. They not like that at all. Um, it's just that I have to protect any family I work with. Um, at the cash app at the bottom, Tony Davis. I got to protect any family I work with. And um, if you're sending, only thing that I'm doing right now is feeding them. Like, I'm literally about to see if they want something to eat right now um, and go in there and feed them. No, no, no. Um, I'm on 48th. I'm about to inbox you. I'm off I'm on for 48th and North. I'm about to inbox you now. Um, you could bring it over here, Tony Davis, or I could pick it up, or you could buy food, or you could order food, or anything like that. Um, anything that you want to do. Um, you could just do it like that. Food, if you want to bring, like, if you want to order, like, some wings or something like that, I'll have somebody go pick it up. Some, like, JJ Fish or anything like that. Somebody could pick it up. Um, or you could bring cash over here. Just anything. Any way y'all want to help. Um, but then at the same time, like I was telling them, the only reason I set up, like, even put the cash up, um, uh, on there was because, like, today, I bought some food for barbecuing. And we were going to barbecue, but the visual started, it was supposed to start at 536. It ended up starting at like seven. So now we're not about to barbecue. So usually each day I take care of the issue. So I thought like, man, you know what? Let me make sure I got money for tomorrow. You know what I mean? Instead of just like worrying about today because now like I'm going backwards because now I can use the foods for tomorrow to barbecue. But then I, but now I need to, instead of the money I spent on the food, I could have spent it on the food. If that make any sense, the money I spent on the barbecue, I could have spent on um, the barbecue, the food, the barbecue, I could have spent on the food today. And it's no, it's no problem with barbecue tomorrow. It's just a matter of now today, let's say I had a budget of 
three fifty to spend on food. Now today my budget is gonna have to jump up to seven hundred, and I may not have had the seven hundred because I don't have an organization. It's just out of my pocket, and that's just me being completely honest. But um, I I just like to pay for stuff. That's how I do stuff. I just go pay for it and just be done with it. But when I ask for people in the community to help, I don't like asking for money. So I would prefer to ask for y'all to pay for stuff. Like, can you just go get the wings? But then or or bring it. Um, but. Some people don't have transportation, and some people don't. Um, I, I really, it's kind of a mixed feelings kind of thing. I don't like ask for money, but because you know I don't like to break people trust barriers. But at the same time, I kind of prefer to go get stuff for people because I feel like it's a lot to ask people to go go buy some chicken and then bring it to the family house and then you know what I mean. Get up out your bed. It's kind of a lot to ask of them to do that. So on one hand, I'd be like, I don't want to ask for money, but on the other hand. I be be like, you know what? I run around and go grab all that stuff because I I might be running around like say somebody cash at me twenty dollars, somebody else cash at me forty, somebody cash at me fifty. Now I can go run around for all three of those people instead of having all three of those people run around to bring a twenty dollar meal, bring a forty dollar meal, bring a fifty dollar meal. You get what I'm saying? You can have all of those people. You can represent all of those people at once, and you can have um one person going to make a trip. For like 15 people. So. Sorry, you know I'm on north so I got to pay attention to. Yeah, it's probably me and black. Um, me and black. It should only be like one that pop up because mine is the ITS. Make sure you put the ITS in there. But um, I didn't get a notification, so. Let me see. Oh, man, somebody just sent me the nicest message. I'm not going to say their name, and I appreciate that. But I don't, I don't, I wouldn't even know how to answer that. Somebody said. That was that was pretty much it. Like you made me smile. I appreciate that. I don't really be wanting nothing. I'm a very low maintenance individual. Just for people to know, I'm very low maintenance. It's stuff that I wish I could do, um, but like um, the community is my life. Like I don't know what I would be doing with my life if I didn't do what I was doing now. Um, like I love it more than anything in the world. Um, music and, and the community. Um, Thank you, Wanda Williams. And then I can even hop in with you if y'all don't feel comfortable giving it to her. I can hop in with you if you don't mind for a split second. I don't mean to impose and just hop in. But no, I appreciate I really appreciated that. I'm an emotional person. So knowing that I reach people, knowing that people like trust me as a platform means a lot to me. I work hard to to stand out. Um, so I'm doing pretty good. Um, I want to say one more thing. This is very tragic what happened. Um, very tragic what happened. I don't know what's going on in our city. Um, mental health is a tremendous thing, man. We gotta... We have to do better in our community. We have to figure out ways to get resources to our people. We have to figure out ways to, like, this should have never happened. And a lot of times, two things happen. One is I show up to families and they know who I am, but they never met me in person. They just know me for doing this. And that's so fucking sad to me like to show up somewhere and a person only meet me in person because they loved ones are no longer with us that part I hate the most about what I do I hate showing up to families and meeting them in person and they love me for what I do but now I, I, I only the only way you meet me in person is if you lose a loved one. And that's a difficult cross to bear.
that's the hard part. The second hardest part is listening to the details of what happened. The details, the news will either eventually get wrong or like the police or the stuff that that you can't even, you know, I wouldn't even say right now. It's hard because you can imagine, like, you can see it. Like, when somebody tells you, like, detail for detail how everything happened, you can see it from either a person. If a person was there, like, say, like, with Justin, it was a little different. I can talk about that. With Justin, they were there. So the little seven-year-old boy had just came outside to tell his uncle, like, I learned how to hit a flip. And they hit a flip, and they was just about to leave. And he hit a flip on the lawn and showed him he could do a backwards flip down the lawn. And then there was a drive-by shooting. He got shot in the back, and he died on the porch with the other little kids right there watching him bleed to death at seven years old. I talked to the uncle. That's how I know that's what happened. That's what he told me to my face. And when he tell you that, he, you know, I'm leaving details out of picking him up and he picked him up and off the porch and, and the blood and how they felt at that moment. When somebody telling you that stuff, it's very absorbing. It's very difficult to process. And this situation... I can't even imagine, like, how to process it from an aspect of actually knowing the people. Like, what they're going through. And the way that they're handling this, their family is just amazing. Like, this is an amazing family. Like, an amazing family. The One of the strongest, the strongest family in the world right now. I'm just being honest with y'all. And there's a lot going on. It's a lot going on. It's always a lot going on. When you have five people that die at once and different families, you know, the dad and the mom had different families, but the daughter just only knows dad and mom, but the mom's family probably is very upset and don't want to do with the dad's family if the dad killed his wife and the kids, you get what I'm saying? But the, also the dad's family, they don't understand why he did it, so they're hurt too. So you have incidents where it's just a lot. Mm-hmm. It's hard losing one person, let alone five. Five. And like she said, uh, you got one three-year-old lone survivor, a baby. He he didn't kill the grandbaby. He didn't kill his grandbaby, the three-year-old. But he killed the 14-year-old. When this story come out, y'all gonna be like, what the fuck? I can't process it, so I know they can't process it. Y'all don't even know how sad the shit is. It's one thing to, like, know that, you know, hey, somebody, five people died at a house, they got shot. What if five people got shot at a house? You can, it, you can only imagine, like, you can't, 
you can only imagine if people try to get away or if people try to not get shot. You know what I mean? Like, or who got shot first or when, when stories like this actually come out, you can only, you know, you don't, you know, you just think about five people at the house. But you don't think about if somebody tried to run, somebody tried to get out the house, if somebody was scared, they tried to beg for their life. They tried to, you know what I mean? Like when that part comes out, that's when, that's the part that people need to know. Because that's what makes it real. That's what makes it a real, that's what makes you make people real. So... What's going on, Jamon? So, like I said again, I'm about to get off this live in a second. It's just, I would never want to wish this kind of pain on nobody. And like I told somebody, there was a young lady that said she wanted to drive down from out of town. And would she be safe in Milwaukee? You know, the narrative they paint in Milwaukee. And I just told her, I said, man, this is a city of love, man. This is sort of like, you know, right now through a grieving time like this. Ain't nobody ever going to mess with this family, man. We a loving city. At the end of the day, don't look at what Fox 6 News and all of them paint us as. We a loving city. We a loving city. Like, you going to be protected, white lady. I told her, you y'all know you white, but ain't nobody going to do nothing to you. You safe. Black people are loving people. We is not. Don't worry about the ones when we troll and then talking about some people in Madison and all that. You come down here trying to support this family, want to give them, donate to them, help them. People going to love on you. Ain't nobody going to run you out of our community. That's not how we are. Don't let the news and all that paint us. A lot of drama and trouble is either domestic or people get into it for reasons and they have problems with each other. And they get into it with each other and then something happens. It ain't just people running around shooting random people like that. It's not a it's not a city going crazy like that. We have not lost our minds. We living in poverty and, and some of us have lost our this is a situation where I believe and with respect to the family, I believe somebody just lost it. But for the most part, they they didn't go downstairs and kill the downstairs neighbors. You get what I'm saying? They didn't just go randomly kill um, anybody walking down the street. So the narrative that we just crazy black folks that just will kill any white person that come in our community, we can't have that narrative being painted. Um, cause then that paints the narrative that anything they want to do to us, they could just do to us cause we animals and stuff like that. We are not animals. Not at all. Ain't nobody going to touch this family. Ain't nobody going to fight at no visual. Ain't nobody going to do none at no funeral. Ain't nobody going to do none of that. We're going to love on this family. Everybody going to love on them. We're going to pull together as a community and as a city like we always do because we wouldn't want our enemies, our enemies to go through something like this. Our enemies. Your worst enemy. I don't know a person that would want their worst enemy to go through something like this. The one girl, her daddy killed her mama and her and her sibling. You see what I'm saying? Imagine her. And she's walking around with the strongest one. The strongest one. Her grand her baby was the grandbaby at the house that didn't get killed. Spared her grandbaby, but her daddy gone now and her mama gone now. Daddy gone to jail, her mama gone forever. Oh, you here? I'm in a um I'm on 48th and North if you go down the one way. I think it's 48th. Um it's a one way street. Let me step out of my car so you can see me. Is this 48th? Let me show y'all where I'm at. Cause I'm still outside. I got you, uh, the, you just inbox me. I'm going to leave you anonymous. I'm right here. Y'all know where this intersection is. Let me make sure it's 48. Like y'all saw right before my leg, live cut off. She said her daughter had the most beautiful voice. The most beautiful voice. She was looking for her a record deal. I hate when they be messing up. See, see, this is the kind of stuff they do on the north side. Where is the sign at for this street? Look, see what I'm saying? No sign. This is the shit that pissed me off about how they treat our community. There's no sign to even let you know what number street this is. Right here, there's no number sign. 
It's just, just stupid shit that pissed me off that I noticed about our community. They'll never do that in Wauwatosa or in their communities. Never. But it's right above. Forty-seven. Thank you. I'm on forty-seven. It's on forty-seven. I'm on forty-seven. So if anybody wants to, I'm still in my car right now. You can pull up right here, and I'll go right in, or bring the the mom out. It, well, probably not the mom, cause. I don't really know how she feel right now, but a family member, out of representative or whatever. If you want to bring food, you can bring food or whatever. I'm about to go in in a second. As soon as this young lady that came meets me. Um, see, somebody saying it's 48. Somebody saying it's 47. Okay, yeah, 47. Yeah. Ashley, no. I'm sure I'm, I'm going to go with Ashley. Not, not, not to say it like that, but Ashley, um, no, the family. So, yeah, but... um. It's just such a hard thing to go through, and man, like I said, um, when you're around families and stuff like this, flowers and, and plants, plants are another good thing, um, I think. Um, plants, I like plants more than flowers, because if you get somebody a plant, they can take care of it, and it can grow, and um, people may actually attach themselves to a plant, like, oh, that's the plant I got when this happened. Um, when when my, I lost my loved one, and they might attach that to taking care of that plant. So it, it's, a, it's a bonding mechanism. Um, so I prefer plants over roses and flowers because those just die. But a plant, you could take care of a plant and have a plant for 10, 15, 20 years sometimes, depending on um, what kind of plant it is. Um, so plants, um, um, anything, food, anything you want to assist with, immediate assistance, um, I got you. Any immediate assistance, just let me know. Um, for the next couple of days or whatever, I'm going to just be trying to feed them. They have a large family and they got more family coming from out of town. I just don't want them to worry about nothing, nothing. The funeral should be taken care of through the GoFundMe. Um, the mom that may need something, she have a cash app. I got to put it back up. So anything you want to do directly for the mom that lost her two kids, she have a cash app. I'm going to try to get the young lady to have the grandbaby um, because it's, it's multiple families. You have the young lady who lost two of her kids. And then you have the young lady who lost her mom and her sibling. And that would be the four. And then so I would have to see who the other child was. But um, that's the young lady. The young lady that has the baby, the three-year-old that didn't get killed. She lost her sibling, uh, maybe two siblings, and her mom. That's the 41-year-old that died. Um, so she has her own issues that she has because she has to raise a three-year-old now without her mom and without her dad and the three-year-old grandparents are gone and then she don't have any uncles and aunties she's like the only one left if i'm not mistaken um who thing cutting up um a man i don't even want to say it like this but a man killed his wife um their kids and the other kids that was at the house basically the kids that weren't his Right. So they were his nieces and nephews. So the man killed like his. Ashley, I I, I can't um remember because I know that the um. This. I don't know for sure if what's the name was his brother, her brother or the sister was the. I know that that's her mom. But I don't know, and and then the, the baby, the three year old, is hers. But I don't know if um, I don't know if that was her brother or her sister or her brother and her sister. Oh no, actually the the, the boy is her is the is. Hello, how you doing? Hey, I'm doing good. Thank you so much. Oh, for sure. Uh, it 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 mean a lot. Trust me. They like they appreciate all the love. They've been chilling. They've been they trying to celebrate like okay. life basically i just talked to them about about making sure that people knew them not as just victims and know them for what they known for right. what they like to do and stuff like that so are you gonna be around for a second i can sit around for a second 
for a second. Okay, because I'm about to get off live and then I can talk to you for okay. a second. No, he didn't kill himself. He turned himself in. He killed um he killed him and then he turned himself in. But I think the um so the the thing is when I'm around families, I'm I'm usually like I went I went through this when my little cousin got murdered. What bothered me was I had to retell the story to everybody in the family because I was the last one with them. Everybody said, so what happened? What happened? What happened? What happened? What happened? Every single family member wanted their own personal story. So whenever I work with families, I don't ask them what happened. I don't ask them for too many details. I hear stuff, but I don't be like, okay, are you the mom of the two babies? And which ones are these are the two that got killed? And you the mom and you the auntie? I don't do that. I don't do none of that. I, like, if they ask me to post something, I post the names and I post whatever they ask me to post. And I just try to level on them and be there for them. And I say, this, this is the family. They be like, that's the mom right there. She lost two kids. Okay, well, the mom lost two kids. I don't try to, like, signal, like, okay, well, which two were hers so I know. But I should know, you know what I mean, and stuff like that. But a lot of times I don't try to because I don't want to talk to her about losing her two kids. I'm not there to talk to her about her two kids being lost. That's not why I'm there. I'm there to make sure she got food, she got love, and to help her with the process and to not have her mourn and think about it. Her family going to love her. Her family actually know her and they know the kids. I never want to come off like a fake individual. Um, and people that love you should be the ones like talking to you about the kids and stuff like that. And we shouldn't be exploiting those people in our community. So if we're going to go help people, we help them. But for the most part... Um, Okay, so one of them, his son wasn't, um, his son wasn't her son, right? She, uh, exactly, V. Marquis. As the, his son wasn't, um, that's why I said, Marcus and Nene were her two kids. Daddy and Tierra were T two kids. Got you. And daddy was his son, right? And Tierra was her daughter from, but not his daughter, right? Let me make sure I got that right. Like, I would rather talk to people that know them about it like this than to actually talk to the individual. Her daughter wasn't his daughter. That's what it was. Okay, so, because that's what I thought. So, Marcus, the 90 year old Marcus and, um, Tierra, so Tierra, so Tierra is T, which is the 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 lady that's forty one years old. Her daughter was Tierra, and I think Tierra was seventeen, right, or nineteen. I gotta look at the ages, cause I know that the um the young lady that lost, like even like I know her name, but I call her the young lady. It's it's. Not for me. It's not for me to be saying her name. The young lady that lost two of her kids, um, the two kids that she lost were brother and sister. Um, and Marcus was no Marcus was nineteen, and and um, and the other her his daughter her daughter um was seventeen, I think, and then Tierra was sixteen, and then they had a fourteen year old son. So that would be right. That would be how I go. So the sixteen year old and the the sixteen year old and the fourteen year old had this the forty one year old was their mom. Um they have another sister. The other sister is the one that sur is the one that her three year old baby survived. It's for those that so let me say that better for those that, that missed it. So the, the the man um killed his wife, um, her daughter, um, and their son, and then he killed his sister, daughter and son. And then they have another daughter that wasn't there. And she has a, a baby that's three years old. And the grandbaby was there, but he didn't kill the grandbaby. Now, I, I, I would assume that the young lady, was that his daughter or was that her daughter? Yeah, Marcus and Nene was Lily kids. Was, um, is the young lady who's the mother of the, of the three-year-old, is she... His daughter or is she T daughter is the only one I don't know now. 
Oh yeah, she's both. She's that was her daddy, right? So that that would make her. That was her mom and her dad. So that would be their kids together, right? If I'm not mistaken. So the whole thing is just tragic. Um, but that's pretty much what happened. He left his grandbaby alive, but he killed the other four people in the house. And the four people in the house was his wife, um, five people in the house, his wife, um, two kids, one was his, one wasn't his, and his sister, two kids. And the living daughter is both their daughter. So now the living daughter has a baby that's three years old. And she lost her brother and her sister and um, her mom. She lost. She, she, she needs her own help. And then you have the mom who lost Marcus and Nene. Um, that's pretty much how they go. No, he don't. He didn't say why he did. They don't listen to the news story about why he did it. Don't listen to that crap about why he did it. Don't listen to that shit. Don't listen to that. They don't. They they talking about money or poverty. I don't know what the hell they was talking about. They ain't had nothing to do with it. Um. Yeah, that um that detail ain't been confirmed yet, Ashley. Well it it um Well I don't wanna give too much I don't wanna I don't even wanna say nothing about that. But yeah. Um every they weren't all kills in their sleep, put it like that. Because they weren't all kills in their sleep. They was they was impossible for all of them to be asleep. One of the, one of them for sure wasn't asleep. Tierra wasn't asleep. Um, like I said, after I talk to the family about releasing the details, then I um, yeah, that's not true. That's not true at all. Exactly, Amber Brody. Five people lost their life. And you have two people that, well, you have two people that are really help. And then you have, like, because you got to think, like, the the one young lady brother killed both her kids. Like, that's hard to possess, possess. And then the one young lady, her daddy killed her mama, both her cousins, and her brother and sister. And then on the other side, you have somebody that lost a sister or their cousin who's not related to the dude. Because remember, the he killed his sister kids. So just so, but his wife side of the family is not related to him. So they probably really hurting that this man that's not related, that's not blood to them, just killed their sister or cousin or or whatever, and they kid and they and they grandkids or cousins. They like this man just killed our family. You get what I'm saying? So you have like that aspect too. And I haven't engaged with that side of the family in my heart. And the shot goes out to them. My condolences go out to them as well. I haven't engaged with that side of the family yet. But um, I definitely um. Oh, she did she leave? I haven't engaged with that side of the family yet. Oh snap. But I uh but I definitely my heart goes out to them for sure. Um Yeah, it don't matter how they was killed. But it do it do matter, but it don't it don't matter, but it it don't matter right now. It don't matter right now, but it does matter because you want people to 
Um, we so desensitized by like society right now. You want people to be human beings again. You know what I mean? Like, even like when you think about black people back in the day, how we got killed. But if you imagine somebody being hung from a tree, that's a whole different. Actually seeing somebody being hung from a tree or imagining it's a whole different thing than just being like, yeah, black people used to get hung. So sometimes like the details, you know what I mean, can make somebody leave a domestic violence situation or, you know, not to say that this this what this is, but the details can actually help bring reality to people like, man, that is real. Like, that's a reality. What happened right now? Just saying all oh, five people died in the house. It just don't even seem real. But sometimes when you hear about um, the way things happen, um, it gives you a different perspective. But you're absolutely right. It really don't matter. Um, people just really hurting at this time. Uh, okay, I'm sorry, Wanda Williams. Um, I was literally just about to be done. Um, you are hot, greatly appreciated. Um so I'm about to get off here. But like I said, if y'all want to help, this is this with the food or anything immediate. Like if you want some flowers or anything y'all want to do directly um, or if you just don't trust a lot of GoFundMe's or you don't trust platforms, anything you want to get to the family, let me know while I'm here. I'll be with them for the next couple of days trying to feed them and love on them and everything like that. Um, any questions y'all have, I'll do my best to answer um, with respect to what's going on with them. Um, anybody want to order some food, I'll go pick it up. I'll do anything like that. I just got a flat tire at their house. So, but I'll still make it happen or whatever. Trust me. Um, anything like that. If you want to, I'm going to be putting up a cash app for the mom that lost her two kids directly. So if you can help her directly, um, that's the young lady that was on the live talking about, she was really close to everybody. She was saying Teresa was her best friend. Um, and be, you, you know, you can, you can imagine that was her, her brother wife. So if that was her brother wife, like, like it was said on here, that was, that was, that could, that was her best friend. Like she said, and. It's very, very sad what happened. And um, um, and then, obviously, uh, the three-year-old baby is going to need some help. Like, she just lost her. The, the young lady lost her grandmama, her granddaddy, her uncle. The little baby lost Uncle A.T., you know, all her siblings, cousins. So she going to definitely need some help, too. So, but what I just posted, though, for those that just tuned in or those that have been watching, is literally for any type of food. If you want to help with just food, if you want me to buy a plant, you want me to buy a card, you want to send a love offering, you want to do anything like that, and you want me to do it in your name or on your behalf, that's what that's for. If you want to help the family with burial or any other of those services, you can directly uh, go to through their GoFundMe that's posted on my page, and you can donate anything that they would need for the GoFundMe. If you want to help family members fly in from out of town, get clothes, get shirts, get balloons, or get anything like that, that'll be the cash app that I post with the mom or whatever. This literally is only for food. Um, this is This is only for food. The wife and her daughter need to be recognized. Right, her daughter, um, her daughter, um, the GoFundMe that's up, that'll go that's for that's for the whole family. So that's for her daughter and that's for that's for both of them. The GoFundMe that's up. It says, um, for the surviving child or the for the surviving baby of the twelfth street shooting. So that's for the baby and the family. So that's for the whole family, for everybody that dies. So if you go give to that GoFundMe, that's for everything. But if you specifically right now just worried about baby clothes or like pampers or any of that stuff, uh, food or anything like that, a GoFundMe can't take care of that. It takes about 21 days to access the money in a GoFundMe, 14 or something like that. So they won't be able to access that money till after the funeral. Um, so if you want to help more immediate, that's what cash apps and stuff like that is for. Um, yeah, and there's two GoFundMe pages. The other GoFundMe page, I'm assuming, is from the family of the mother. Um, not the family that I'm representing right now. And I just haven't met with them to clear anything, to talk to them about anything. But they talk to the media on their own, and that's stuff that they got set up. Um, well, Ashley, you know, I'm just saying hypothetically, um, anything that you want to do. Um, so, yeah, you're right. He don't wear diapers. He's three. But baby clothes, kid clothes, I'm just saying kid stuff. You know, you know I don't. I, my kids is 20 and stuff. I don't be knowing no more. 
But anything that y'all want to help with, um, like with the baby, I was just thinking like baby in my head. Anything y'all want to help with with the baby and stuff like that, I got to put something specific up for, for that for them. I haven't really, um, like I said, I haven't talked to her much. She lost um, everything, so I've seen her, but I haven't been like, hey, can we stop and talk about your cash app? No, I haven't done that. You know what I mean? But so, um, actually, know how I am. Yeah, one is for the baby and one is for the funeral cost. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Got you, got you, got you, got you. So they do got two cash. The baby a boy. Yeah, I don't think I said she. I think she said that. I think she said the mama and she said the mother and the, and the, and the, she was referring to. I was referring to the po the comment I think she made about like that one's needed for the mom and the mom of the baby. The baby's a boy. If I said a girl, I apologize. Um, okay, so they have two GoFundMe. So they have two GoFundMe's up. So I don't think she have a cash. Okay, I'm sorry about that. I don't think she have a cash app. And when I say she, I mean the mom. Um, yeah, I, I, probably was, I probably was trying to refer to um, the mom. So I don't think she have a cash app for the baby. Um, so I guess she have a go for me, but I'll, I'll post all of that stuff and it get confusing. And that's why I just do what I do kind of, cause it can get confusing for people because it'd be a lot of families involved and stuff like that. Um, but know that like a lot of times it ain't fake pages or fake GoFundMe's. It's just people are on separate sides of the family or they bury in separate people. Like if it's three people that die, they might have three people that have rights over the body. Yeah, the surviving daughter. Um, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, got you, Ashley. So yeah, the surviving. Um, I'm about to see. I'm about to see her when I go in there. Um, like I said, I don't. I don't engage them about. I don't want to bring it up. We just talking. We just chilling and and whatever they doing, bringing food around. I don't try to bring up. You know what I mean what's actually going on. So that's why sometimes I don't have the details. I had the details of what happened, but I don't be having the details of which family member relates directly to who. Like I ask who's going to be the spokesperson and stuff like that. And then I usually leave it at that. But I do need to get that stuff up. And like, that's why I do what I do the way that I do it because some people just want to give and then they'll see two GoFundMe's, then they'll see a third GoFundMe and then they'll say two cash apps. And then they'll hit me and say, Frank, which one am I supposed to give to? And I'll be like, well, they all are connected. And then so I'm just telling people now why things happen the way they happen. What I have posted is for food. If you want to get them some food tonight or tomorrow or the day after that, this is for food or a plant or, or roses or you want to send them flowers or anything to the, to the funeral, anything like that. That's what my cash app is for. If you want to help the mother who just lost her two kids directly, she was on my live earlier. She has a cash app on my live. You can send directly to that cash app. You can pull up at the house. You can cash out me and tell me it's directly for her. You can let me know. I'll pick it up or anything like that. And you can help her directly for that. If you want to do anything for the funeral costs or the baby, there's a GoFundMe up for the funeral costs and the surviving baby. So that's specifically for the funeral costs. Like I explained to people before, the GoFundMe's are set up where you can't access the money. So when people do a GoFundMe, they have to pay that. That money is to pay back the funeral home and to pay stuff back. But they need T-shirts. They need balloons. And they need um, things that they'll need before the funeral. Clothes for the people at the funeral. Haircuts. Um, all that kind of stuff. Some people need to be flu in and out of town. Um, um, anything like that. GoFundMe won't be able to cover that. So when you see somebody post a GoFundMe and everybody said the funeral is already covered, the reason they need money on a cash app is probably because they got 100 people at their house they're trying to feed every day for seven days. It's like $500 a day for like seven days, literally. Okay? So when you have to spend that kind of money on food, that's where I come in. And I come in and I buy food normally out of my pocket, but this family's too big for me. Just got to be honest. Family too big for me. It's about 75 to 100 people. It's five people that died at once. So... It's too big. Usually I deal with about 20, 30 people. I buy food, liquor, whatever they need. I don't go live. I don't tell people about it. I just buy it and, and move on with my life and help the family. And then y'all see me on the news and talking to them and helping them. But I be with them for like 20 hours a day, every day for like a month after the funeral, before the funeral. And I just don't go live and talk about it because it's very private. In this situation, everybody in the world know what's going on.
This world news, every city, every state in the United States, people are going to be talking about this. It's nothing I can do to hide this story. It's nothing I can do to sugarcoat it. It's going to come out no matter what. Um, and basically, I just wanted them to get on top of it because um, they're going to need a lot of help mentally to get through this. People ain't going to be able to just go to work. Um, people ain't even going to, they can't even go to the house right now. People got to stay in hotel rooms and stuff like that, possibly. Because the house, they boarded up. The police boarded the house up. And who would want to go in the house and live there right now? Who would want to go live there after all of this? Say you was the one that wasn't home and now everybody died in there. Would you want to go live in there directly after this? So a lot of that stuff is caught. It costs a lot of money for all of that stuff. Um. So that's my last final plea. That's my cash app. If y'all want to help, let me know. Please inbox me if you want to help with anything else. Like I said, flowers, anything like that. Let me go in here, talk to the family, um, hang out with them for a little bit. I'll be doing a live tomorrow talking about how they spirits, how, how good they doing, and just with all of the details and everything. I love my city. I love y'all. Thanks for watching.